Kristen. So escape is currently a very on-trend word, given the current situation, and it's not just about location. Interiors can be escapist as well, and you'll find both in a new book called, here it is, Escapology by our very own Colin and Justin. Congrats, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Oh, we're super, super excited. You know, and the time is right. People are looking to escape the cities. They're looking for new challenges. There's a whole new generation of uh, frontiers people out there ready to do something different. And people are looking for escapism in decor as well. We've been trapped at home for months looking at our boring walls. We want our homes to be exciting. We want them to be experiential. And now is the time for us all to become home Houdinis and experience some escapology. I think now more than ever before because of the way the world is going, Gone. We all need to escape and to get away and take our foot off the gas. So when we put our book together, we really plotted and planned as many different variations of cabins, Tracy, as we could get in there. So we've got one in Scotland that looks like an airship. It's just incredible. It's like faceted glass and steel. It's really impressive. We've got an American log cabin. We've really tried to mix it up and make it as incredibly special as possible. And one of our favourites in there is a fantastic place called Black Birch which is just such a special escape. Absolutely. Doing it for Canada. Oh, I love that. I flipped through the book, and the photography is just mind-boggling. It is gorgeous. I want a cabin immediately. Uh, but talk to me about what makes these cabins escapist. What is it? You know, I think the thing that they all share is an appreciation of the landscape. And I think that's the first thing. If you're looking to create an escape, you know, you think about the position. You've got a piece of land. You know, what can you do to make the most of it? You know, so you want to look at the proximity to water. You want to look at exposure, sunlight as well. And then just think about how you can actually position rooms that you'll use at different times of the day to make the most of that time. You know, it might be great sunsets. You want to have a dining room there and just end every single day with your friends watching the sun go down. Now when Chris and Susan put this cabin together they spent a lot of time visiting the cabins and the cottages of friends because what they wanted was something that was absolutely on the money so they, they figured out the bits that worked in friends cabins, the bits that didn't work they looked at elevation, they wanted something high up looking down over the water it's a really commanding eagle like eerie status, it's really fantastic now it's no wonder that it's special because Chris actually owns an incredible company called Euro Glass House and they make these incredible windows so all around that baby the most fantastic fenestration giving you a bird's eye view of everything beautiful now i think a lot of us are thinking are there some escapist elements that we can actually incorporate into our own homes Oh, absolutely. You know, and if you look around Black Birch, it's loaded with them. For me, you know, when you use exotic timbers, things that aren't the norm, that really does feel escapist. There's a wall of incredible century-old Ontario barn board that stretches over two floors. It adds texture and colour, history and heritage to the space and makes it feel really escapist. You know, but escapism could come from a fancy faucet on your sink. It could come from underfloor heating. There are lots of things that we can actually do in our spaces just to make them a bit more special. What they did when they put this cottage together was they figured out how it should articulate as you transition from zone to zone. So behind that incredible barn board wall, that's where the bedrooms are and that's where the bathrooms are. So there's a degree of separation from the party and then the relaxing zone. And I think that's what Chris and Susan did so incredibly well here. They planned out every single part of it. So as you move around, everything feels that like there's a connection to everywhere else. But the top tip there is if you can orchestrate your ground and your territory in such a way as to demarcate the space behind, say, a wall or, or keep the bedrooms and the living rooms separate, then do as they did. Follow their lead and give yourself the cabin of your dreams. Well, I'd like to follow their lead, that's for sure. Surely the view is the most escapist element. I mean, just gorgeous. The view is incredible, okay? But, you know, if you're sitting at home thinking, okay, I don't have that great a view, then why not create views inside you know you look at uh, instagram you look at pinterest there's beautiful vignettes people do things with their furniture with their accessories with their artwork to actually create shapes so think about how you can create stunning views yourself you know maybe your windows are overdressed as well maybe you've got to strip off a layer let natural light flood in so that you feel properly connected to your surroundings now it's really important as well tracy when you're putting your place together that you try and think of ways to add surprises now black birch is all 
about stealth. Now, it's on the same lake as us. It's actually over that way. But as you navigate around the lake, you can't see it because Chris and Susan and their architect, Brad from Stamp Architecture, designed it in such a way that it's hidden. So it's a real surprise. So you berth up on that dock and you walk up and then all of a sudden you're faced with the majesty of that incredible black birch cabin. Also, it might be something as simple as hiding, I don't know, a sauna or a hot tub along a little pathway so you can navigate and you meander around and you're constantly met by new things. It could be a bench, just somewhere to take in that lake vista. All of that detail is super important. You've got to think about what you want and plan it properly and only then will you create the cottage of your dreams. Okay, so now I know what I'm going to do. So when I take the helicopter over to your cottage, then I visit you, then I just jump in my you come boat. With your chopper. Yeah, come in my chopper. Then I just jump in my boat, and then I go across to Chris and Susan, and I hang out with them a little bit, and then I'm going to get like the full sort of. It's Drag Lake, right? Is that where you are? They throw the best parties on the lake. You have no idea. The Chris and the Susan parties are the stuff of local legend. You know, but you can have escapology. You can have escape every single day, you know. And I think that's what we've learned from the book, you know, by actually sharing all these wonderful properties, that it is about just taking time for yourself. It's about just taking time to make yourself feel special. That's super and important. we all deserve that. Come on, we're all stressed out of our minds at the moment. We need some escapism. It's so important, you know, as we put this book together, Together, Tracy, we were really looking at ways to demonstrate an example of every type of cabin that anybody might love. So it's such a mixed bag of opportunity, but as much as well, it's a cottage Bible. So it's full of instruction about how to find the cottage, how to engage a realtor, how to do all of that stuff. It's not just pretty pictures, it's really considered information as well. Ooh, exactly. good Everyone guide. From this point forwards, will become an escapologist. Ooh, I love that. I love that. And I love looking at Canada through your eyes. You came here and immediately fell in love with cottages and cabins and I think that is that's